The first presentation in this panel is entitled Lessons from the Pandemic Using Creative Writing for Not Teaching L2. And it's by uh, Dr. Babak Tabari from the University of Texas at Austin. Dr. Tabari is a lecturer and the coordinator of the Persian program at the University of Texas at Austin. His academic and professional background covers an eclectic spectrum of media and arts, including cinema, theater, and literature. His publications in Farsi include three authored books of fiction, 22 book format translations, and several essays, short stories, and screenplays. His English writings have appeared in the Bull, Ariana Studies, the soundtrack, and cinephile. His research revolves around media reception in modern Iran. So please join me in welcoming Dr. Tabari. Thank you very much, Dr. Azaz. Uh, I will start by sharing my screen first. Uh, All right, here we go. Uh, hello, everyone. Thank you for being here uh, today in this virtual room. I know how exhausting uh, it must be sitting in yet another Zoom meeting uh, for all of us, especially on a Saturday morning. So I try to make my presentation uh, a little less formal and hopefully a little uh, entertaining. Um, I will first review some of the main challenges and concerns that all of us have experienced last year and then share with you some of the practical solutions that uh, I have found and applied in my classes, uh, including some exercises that I hope we will have time to uh, at least practice one of them together. Okay, and now my slides are stuck. Okay. Here we go. So the past 13 or 14 months uh, in retrospect look like um, an apocalyptic science fiction movie uh, punctuated by a new crisis uh, or a new source of anxiety at every imaginable interval for both the students and the instructors. Of course, as second uh, language instructors, we are already familiar with the concept of foreign language anxiety or FLA, which is a specific kind of anxiety that uh, L2 learners may experience. There is extensive research uh, on the sources of FLA, including the works of Elaine Horowitz and her colleagues that have informed us that about one third of all of L2 learners may feel anxious in the language classroom because they cannot transfer um, their first language skills to the public space of uh, the second language classroom. Let's say you're a funny and intelligent person in your own language, and then uh, with limited vocabulary and structures that are still new to you, you want to retain those characteristics in front of a new group. It's almost impossible, so you feel uh, less of yourself. Now, this public space has just turned to, into these windows of faces. Everything is online. Uh, a student's digital device may be not up to date, their connection uh, may be not strong, the place they're staying may be a source of discomfort, their family may uh, experience health issues or financial problems, they might be away from their loved ones uh, for a long time. Uh, and then there were so many uh, disturbing things that haven't happened in this country uh, in the past year. And on top of that, in the case of uh, my first year students, they were facing a less commonly taught language that in the beginner level means coming to a virtual classroom every day for a year. Now that is a lot of intensified FLA. We as, inst uh, as instructors uh, have had these additional layers of anxiety too. Of course, uh, I can easily say that 2020 was the most stressful year of my life. I finished and defended my dissertation while teaching in the summer, moved to a new apartment, started a new job. Uh, I had a family member hospitalized for four months. And here's something to cheer you up. I became a father. So here I was in the middle of crisis after crisis, searching for my own kind of pacifier. 
and uh, reflecting on a question that I'm sure many of us, if not all of us, uh, have been asking ourselves. How can we come up with pedagogical strategies that both acknowledge and resolve some of these anxieties and remain faithful to the principles of the communicative approach to teaching second languages? My answer to this question has been not teaching language as much as possible. Now, of course, uh, by that I don't mean leading a teacherless classroom, as you can see in this cartoon, uh, nor do I mean not teaching the language at all. In fact, uh, I have made tens of videos as supplementary materials for my students over the past nine months, something that I wouldn't have done had it not been uh, for the online mode. By not teaching uh, the language, I mean that I have tried to fully embrace a student-centered model uh, of teaching and replace the role of language instructor with that of a facilitator or a teacher of some other cultural materials that as it happens requires the students to learn that language too. Now this style is of course very much indebted uh, to the principle of introducing language as its use. And so it follows the same rules of guided deduction, measured contextualization, using authentic sources and giving holistic tasks to the students rather than single objective assignments. My most important goal has been to encourage creativity in the classroom because I believe that creativity nurtures enthusiasm and enthusiasm leads to internalizing the skills which in the long run uh, may result in long-term impacts. How can we incite creativity? Now, before answering that uh, question, let me emphasize that by all means, I don't mean to uh, claim that my method has been successful. These are just uh, some of the strategies and techniques that I have used in a trial and error fashion. The students welcomed some of them. They were not so happy with some of them. So I'm just reporting this process here with you uh, with the hopes of getting professional feedback from y'all. In short, I had three strategies for uh, increasing and promoting creativity in the classroom. Making the appearance of myself and uh, the Zoom environment as exciting as possible, designing multimedia lesson plans, and using creative writing techniques. First, I attended to the appearance. I got myself a very large whiteboard and used the color markers extensively. And then for specifically themed classes, I used a variety of relevant virtual backgrounds or even pieces of clothes. I also used my love for comedy and jokes uh, to make the environment of the class as lively as I could. Now, all of these are of course very general. Second, uh, depending on the level of the students, I employed multimedia lesson plans, songs, poems, films, clips of television series, etc. Uh, and I use them as media texts, as uh, materials of the class, as entertainment before the class, in the middle of the class, after the class, and even as sources of assessment. This strategy was certainly in line with my hope uh, to not be considered by my students as a language instructor. I tried to play the role of a culture and media guide uh, to the Persian at world, uh, if you will. My third strategy was using creative writing techniques as home assignments, class activities, and parts of the students' evaluation segments. Uh, my choice of um, going after creative writing was at first instinctive. Before starting to teach Persian in 2016, I used to teach creative and dramatic writing for seven years. So it was coming from a kind of confidence and control over the materials that made me less anxious in the classroom. But then I looked uh, for educational resources on the matter and found out that in fact, there is a growing body of uh, research on using creative writing in L2 classes. For example, there are academic uh, articles about using storytelling and poetry writing techniques uh, for teaching English to students in Saudi Arabia, in Spain, in Japan. And there is, of course, solid scholarship on the impact of creativity and language play in learning languages, including the works of uh, my co-panelist, Dr. Bahloul. So 
based on these works and uh, my experience of teaching playwriting, fiction writing, screenwriting, and writing for radio and television uh, at Iranian universities, I used a variety of creative writing techniques in my classes in order to reduce the students' anxiety and develop their cultural and pragmatic competencies alongside their linguistic skills. In other words, by adopting uh, the role of a teacher of creative writing, I encouraged my students to aim for fluency rather than feeling stressed out uh, over accuracy. How did I do it? Well, I guess the best way of telling it is showing it, which is itself a rule of uh, screenwriting. My first example is taken from uh, a book written by Ken Adams, How to Improvise a Full-Length Play. I give the whole class uh, a simple prompt sentence. For example, I say, Jack loved Jill. Then I'm, I mention a student's name. They have to start a sentence with because, and then they repeat the sentence that I said, and then they complete their sentence in a way that uh, logically makes sense. For example, they would say, because Jack loved Jill, he asked her out. Now, of course, all of that in Persian. Then that student mentions the name of another student. And the second student should start with because, then repeat the sentence of the first student, then complete their own sentence, and then mention the name of another student. For example, they might say, because Jack uh, asked Jill out, she said no. We continue this exercise until everybody in the class has had a chance to participate or until the story comes to its natural end. There are four conditions uh, to this game. Being a spontaneous, so not thinking, just saying the first thing that comes to your mind, following the rule of cause and effect, respecting the idea of the person before you, and contributing to the collective nature of the game uh, by, by planting a good seed for the person after you. Uh, now, I think it's a good game to do right now if uh, there are volunteers for that. So uh, I wanna play this game. Uh, anyone who uh, wants to play this game, please uh, turn on your videos. Anyone who doesn't want to part participate, please just turn off your videos. Uh, and let me, stop the share for a second so that we can see everyone here. Okay. So uh, here we go. The first, the sentence that I have in mind right now is Joe didn't come to class on Monday. Joe didn't come to class on Monday. Now I don't dare to uh, call you by names to, to, to start. So anyone who's a volunteer, please start with by saying, because Joe didn't come to class on Monday and then complete the sentence. Anyone? Yes, please. Oh yeah. Um, because Joe didn't come to class on Monday, he had to call um, Allison and get her class notes. Perfect, thank you. Joe had to call Allison and get her notes. Anyone wants to continue that? Because Joe called Allison and asked for the uh, notes. Okay. Yes, please, Janet. Uh, because Joe called Allison and asked for the notes, his girlfriend, um, Sahar, got really mad. Thank you very much. Sahar got really mad. So we are starting a, a play. We are starting a story. Like this thing will ha would happen. Like every time that I play this game, somebody says something, the class just starts to laugh uh, and, and, and we forget about the anxiety of, oh I, my God, I have, to, I have to practice the past tense perfectly. Uh, anyone wants to continue that? Joe's girlfriend was really mad, got really mad. Because Joe's girlfriend was really mad, we don't know where Joe is now. <laughs> You already killed her, <laughs> killed Joe. That's perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, now, one of the things that I might just correct the students while doing this exercise is just the causal relation and not their use of language. So by uh, distracting them from the language, 
putting the focus on the dramatic focus of uh, the game, again, my hope is that they become more spontaneous. All right. I think I can share the screen again. <coughs> OK. So. Um, so the original objectives of this exercise were clear. Practicing the necessary causal relation in dramatic stories, teamwork, and learning how to improvise. I have used it in my language classes when the energy of the class is low because it encourages a friendly spirit that we sometimes miss in online classes. It's a good excuse for using new vocabulary. We can practice different verb tenses and some stuff that are specific to Persian, such as practicing the attached pronouns, the direct object identifier, or the spoken Persian in general. So uh, there are other exercises built upon the results of this simple one that lead to making a complete story over time. They shift the focus of the students from the possible errors to some tangible results, and they're entertaining as well. I've taken another useful set of exercises uh, for writing and speaking from Noel Gregg's Playwriting, A Practical Guide, combined with Richard Crivolin's How to Adapt Anything into a Screenplay. Uh, this collection of exercises start with something called instant writing. Uh, I'm afraid because we don't have time to do it together again. Uh, I just explain how it works. Please feel free to read the uh, objectives of the exercise while I explain it. Each student in class will use a piece of paper uh, and a pen, not a digital device, to write spontaneously. I'll tell, I tell them that when I say start, the tip of their pen should touch the, pe uh, should touch the uh, paper and it should remain on the paper writing until I say stop. They will have about two to three minutes to write anything that comes to their mind in Persian. I ask them to not think about it. It may be just a string of words, uh, an absurd sentence, or basically anything that they can think of. I tell them if they cannot think of anything uh, in Persian, they should just write, I am writing, I am writing, I am writing, I am writing, in Persian, of course, until a word appears. In other words, they should never not write, or simply they should always write. Then uh, I tell each student to choose three words or phrases from what they have written and use them in a sentence that starts with uh, yesterday she. Let me move this so that I can see the slide. So they start with a sentence with uh, yesterday she, well, he or she are the same thing in Persian, mm -hmm. uh, with three words in that sentence. Then uh, I assign the students into groups of four. Each student should give their sentence to another student. So each student will be responsible for a sentence that they have not written. And they should continue that sentence with a second one, which is meaningfully and logically in continuation of the first one. And they should start with these words. Today, she likes to. When they're done, they give their sentence to the third person in the group who will add another sentence starting with, she doesn't understand why. And finally, the fourth person of the group would write the last sentence starting with, the world would be a better place for her if. So in about 20 minutes into the exercise, we will have the skeleton of a dramatic story for each student that is produced out of nothing but improvisation and group work. And then there are other steps that continue this uh, germinal idea into a complete story. For example, we further develop the idea together by working on a theme, we polish the story outline through some uh, screenwriting techniques. And then there are a variety of fun games for characterization, and they include writing, speaking, role playing, designing questions, and improvisation. Such exercises uh, contribute to the students' internalization of the productive skills of the language. My surveys from uh, the students show that they even prefer them as uh, some indirect modes of evaluation to the more direct questions uh, in their exams. I have to add that early uh, 
on the pandemic career, I opted for almost exclusively take home exams instead of the very stressful setting of sitting for two or three hours in front of a computer to respond to questions. I made my students sign the university's honor code, told them they could consult websites, books, dictionaries, but they could not get help from another person. Instead, my exams are rather long and uh, depending on the materials, I might give them any time between 24 to 96 hours to complete an exam. I believe spending more time within, uh, with the evaluation materials uh, may provide another opportunity for learning and increase the longevity of the education. It's like the impact of reading a novel versus a short story. So you read a story within minutes, uh, but with a novel, you might spend days or even weeks with a novel. So in a way you spend time, you live with that novel. Therefore, it might have a long time impact on you. Uh, to conclude, uh, I just show you some examples of the exercises that I have so far devised as the assignments or exams for my Persian classes. If you want, we can talk about them in uh, the Q&A. Here is one of them. Um, throughout the semester, they design an imaginary Iranian double for themselves, and they present on the routine, the daily life of this Iranian double. Here are some fun exam materials. Uh, they really like the detective asks. So they become uh, uh, a detective to solve the murder mystery of a 65 year old single lady or the chatty driver who is taking them from uh, Tehran airport to their hotel, but the driver doesn't know the address. Um, for the intermediate level, we have had uh, a fun poetry writing exercise that they really like. Again, any, everything happens in the classroom for this one. And the advanced level I taught Iranian cinema this uh, semester, I am still teaching it. So there was a role-playing game, for example, in the second class uh, that we have had. Each of them became like, one of them became an ayatollah, one of them became a poet, and they discussed whether it is okay to import cinema into Iran or not. Uh, thank you very much for bearing with me. I know that I might have talked too much. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Babak. That's a, uh, a very insightful one. I really liked some of the ideas. We'll continue to take questions at the end. And this panel, uh, part of this panel is an interesting talk, I think, um, an edutainment pedagogy. Edutainment seems to be a combination between entertainment and education. And it's by uh, Professor Meher Behlul at the American University uh, at Sharjah in the United Arab Emirates. Professor Behlul holds a PhD in linguistics from Cornell University, New York, and an MA from the Sorbonne University in Paris. He taught courses in language, linguistics, and translation and TESOL in the United States and the Middle East. He participated in more than 60 international conferences and conducted workshops in various applied linguistics fields. Professor Behlul published various peer-reviewed books and articles in theoretical linguistics, applied linguistics, sociolinguistics, and the field of pedagogy, the last of which titled Lights, Camera, Action, and the Brain. The use of film in education, <clears throat> which, excuse me, which he co-edited with Carolyn Graham, the famous creator of Jazz Chance. Dr. Bahloul has also been promoting the field of learning through the arts. He has been conducting language learning sessions through performing arts in Europe and in the MENA region. He has also been involved in teacher training in relation to different methodologies and pedagogies. This effort is supported by centers he founded in Paris and Tunis, in addition to a website where he really uh, document the effect of these areas. Dr. Behloul is currently an associate professor at the Department of English at the American University of Sharjah in the United Arab Emirates. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Behloul. Well, thank you very much, uh, uh, my dear colleague, Dr. Mahmoud. Uh, it's been a pleasure uh, corresponding with you. And um, uh, I just wanna make sure that my screen is clear. You hear me, everything is fine. Everything is great. Excellent, excellent, very good. Um, I think my talk uh, is uh, maybe 
close to the first talk, uh, my colleague, uh, uh, and a little bit uh, different from the second one. <clears throat> uh, since this is pretty much uh, a pedagogy, and through which really, uh, you know, the language is being, uh, you know, uh, uh, learned. Um, um, thank you for the introduction. Uh, and uh, I just wanna say that uh, you're right, uh, the edutainment is pretty much uh, the combination of, uh, of education and entertainment. And uh, what I would in, in, in the book that uh, we, I co-edited with Carolyn Graham in, in 2012, we, we asked a major question, uh, uh, which is uh, why uh, is Hollywood really far away from campuses? <clears throat> because the field of, of entertainment um, just uh, traveled away and far away from the field of uh, education. And uh, the field of education was left uh, a little bit uh, without that item, uh, uh, which is the entertainment. Uh, so hopefully today you will get a little bit of, um, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll share with you how the tool of uh, filmmaking uh, could be uh, re, uh, you know, revisited and uh, maybe uh, reintegrated into the um, curriculum, especially with uh, language learning. Many have, have been asking about, uh, you know, first classes, uh, first level, second level, third level. I, I, I know uh, we all have textbooks. I know we all have uh, rigid uh, and dynamic assessment measures, but I think uh, the way we, uh, um, uh, present the language to the students. Um, I think it should be more of uh, hands-on, more of a project-based. Uh, uh, the more they do things with the language, the more I think, and the more effective they, they learn it. The more they learn about the language, uh, the less they, they get it, and it becomes really uh, a burden. Uh, so let me uh, try to move a little bit, just the idea of performance. When we talk about uh, performance, what we really, what we are familiar with is uh, the, the drama, the theater part, for example, on the left side, you see the filmmaking on, on the right side. In between, of course, we have, you know, singing, we have uh, role playing, we have the visual arts. So we have all other types of, uh, of, uh, of uh, performing uh, arts, but anything which uh, really the, the, the student uh, or the learner in general uh, gets involved in doing, uh, which is a, some sort of a performance. Uh, and nowadays, which could, real, which could result in some sort of a production. So uh, you could, you know, the students could film themselves, uh, you know, uh, painting uh, or uh, doing sculpture or uh, acting of some sort, or uh, they could have a project of uh, uh, a piece of, uh, of, of theater. Uh, even the exercises which, uh, you know, Babak was promoting in class, one writes a sentence, the other one writes a sentence. And I think his, his idea behind the, the the, uh, the thread is really to end up with an interesting story. So storytelling becomes really the, 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 the most appealing and the most interesting. And, and the more you get the interest of the students in what they're doing, uh, I mean, the, the, the more they end up, you know, uh, getting the, uh, the, the, the structures and the language and, what, uh, and uh, whatever we would like to instill in, in, in the learners. Uh, now, <clears throat> what I would like to show you, uh, the first really like almost 10 minutes, I would like you to watch this little uh, short film, uh, which uh, we shot a few years back, and uh, just relax, uh, have a drink, and just listen to it. I hope it will play with no issues. Just let me try. Do you hear? Do you hear the sound? Okay. Uh, you may increase maybe the sound so that uh, you can uh, hear everything. <clears throat> uh, here, the, the sound is at its uh, highest. Uh, 
loudest. So make sure also you increase the sound so you can you can hear it. So the film will play, and then after the film we will uh, we will continue. Okay. <laughs> Jean, where is the Orti? It's me, Disney. Wind machine. Machine low shark at Nella Bubukura. Tim Shimaima. Hey, Heb. And as it up. And as it up. Baba, I'm sure, ma'am. Hey, baby, baby. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Mama, what is she meant? 
Ta kushina, fokatola. Juanita, jipa kese and I shik. Shkola. Spago. Aslema. Okay, as you can see in this uh, particular short film, I'll, I'll come into the details, but <clears throat> the, uh, the learning, um, when we look at uh, all the types of uh, all the grammar and all the themes from how to greet to how to introduce yourself to how to introduce the others to how to invite, how to accept, how to decline invitations how to ask and give permission, uh, how to suggest, uh, how to ask about prices, how to express likes and dislikes, how to express opinions, uh, how to request politely, how to talk about locations, uh, how to talk about time, how to express exclamation and ask WH questions. All of these, usually you find them in uh, uh, books of grammar and they're all pretty much uh, compiled in this uh, short production. So in terms of learning outcomes, uh, there is um, a great deal of uh, 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 language 
ranging from vocabulary to grammar to structure and so on and so forth. And uh, <clears throat> let me talk about the learning spaces. Uh, as you can see, this is shot pretty much inside a house. Uh, one of the teachers uh, volunteered, she said that we can have uh, this uh, uh, production done in, in my house because it's a birthday and uh, she has a short, uh, a small uh, backyard for, for the soccer uh, game and so on and so forth. But the total really number of hours is 28 hours. And uh, the speakers, you can see, uh, we, we mixed uh, age groups which is pretty much a feature, a strong feature of filmmaking or, or uh, plays. And uh, we don't need to worry a lot about uh, what traditional language really uh, learning uh, seeks to put level one, all of them in level one and level two, all of them in level two. With this particular approach, you don't worry about that because the roles will take care of that. The advanced can take advanced roles and the beginners can, can, can take beginner roles. And then with the rehearsal and with the practice, things will, uh, will uh, end up working uh, naturally together. And um, if we learn from language acquisition, we know that uh, babies don't learn, you know, just uh, with levels, uh, even though the learning process follows a particular pattern but the, uh, everyone is exposed to uh, uh, you know, an amount of language that mixes the, you know, the, 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 the little to the, to the, the simple, to the uh, compound, to the complex structures and so on and so forth. So 28 hours of, of language training, uh, they were spread over uh, seven weeks uh, because they, only, they were only the parents worked. So they only had uh, a few times uh, slots uh, but this particular session could be, uh, we also did it in, in, in one week over the break. And we did it with 28 and also with 38 hours uh, so that uh, uh, the whole production at the end would mirror more or less uh, the work of uh, one semester in any academic institution. Uh, so a whole semester of learning could be done in one week. And uh, um, the tea time breaks uh, when uh, in, a, in a work like this, the tea time breaks, we managed to kind of bring the native speakers who were mingled with the, with the learners. So this way, they, what they learned and what they were practicing were pretty much, uh, uh, pretty much uh, uh, a great way of reinforcing and then getting them close to, to the, uh, to the uh, target learning, uh, uh, to the target structures and, and learning outcomes. Um, now, even though, as you can see, maybe, you know, there are like 800 words in the whole uh, 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 short film, but, but of course the training of the 28 hours included more uh, words and more structures uh, to uh, in, in the practice. Uh, triple that amount went into the training. Um, in addition to this, of course, the activities that come with uh, with filmmaking, um, especially the storytelling and the storyboarding, as you can see, for example, in this uh, uh, slide, uh, all of them had to sketch and all of them had to draw from the scenes to the background to, uh, so there was a great deal of uh, creativity and imagination that went on behind uh, each, uh, each scene. So this particular uh, um, uh, film was in one of the, uh, uh, in this particular book that uh, myself and Karen Graham, we put together in 2012. And it's chapter nine, it's called Welcome to Tunisia. And the idea was to promote really uh, all the language learning with some, you know, um, short films from welcome to Morocco, welcome to Egypt, welcome to Jordan. And where the, the you know, the students who really take the, the first, the first uh, course 
would be involved in a short production similar to this one. But of course, this one was a birthday because Alan wanted a birthday and it was his birthday. But uh, the content is a negotiation between the facilitator and also the, the learners. So this way, it's not a textbook imposed on them. So they choose pretty much what they would like to, uh, to work on. Uh, I just want to read a little bit what uh, Alan's uh, mom uh, um, mentioned. Uh, uh, in fact, uh, Alan's mom is Michelle, the one who was uh, acting. Uh, and uh, she sent us like two months after the film, uh, uh, a letter that had two pages. So I just uh, took a little bit of uh, uh, a testimony from her uh, from her letter. So it was a delight to participate in the making of the MLI film uh, with my children. I thank you for the opportunity. My son who has struggled linguistically even in English because of brain damage um, uh, as a toddler loves to watch what he calls my birthday movie in Arabic. He has actually begun to use uh, the phrases from the film when talking to people in Derja, Tunisia and Arabic. So in my opinion, the film was a great success and uh, thank you deeply. Um, so uh, just to tell you that uh, this particular uh, uh, testimony, we had many other similar testimonies because when, um, when you do something that is memorable and, that, and it changes really the life of that particular person when it comes to learning something new, uh, this is this is going way beyond learning the language. Um, uh, the social really skills of Alan um, uh, developed. Uh, he used to he used to be uh, very introvert, and his mom was telling us that now Alan, uh, we go in a taxi. He would ask questions to the taxi driver, and the questions that he learned in the film, he kind of uh, asked them again. When we meet people, he also remembers the questions and then he asks the same questions. At home, when our friends uh, come, they tell them, let's watch my movie. So he ended up watching the film so many times. And she said he's been using the structures everywhere and with a lot of people. And she said it was a life uh, changing experience for Alan. I mean, what a pleasure to see uh, a language course turning into a life-changing event for a student. Um, just think about it. I just want to, uh, um, of course, leave room for the for the questions later on. But just uh, to tell you that the edutainment is is growing, and uh, for example, this is a 2019 uh, 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 book uh, which uh, Carmen uh, Herrero. Uh, was one of the also uh, chapter writers in the 2012 the volume, which I co-edited with Carolyn Graham. She published lately this particular volume, a very interesting one. And uh, in uh, at UBC, um, <clears throat> George Bellevue for a long time has been has been working and promoting the use of drama uh, in the language classroom for uh, aggressively. And it, it went beyond the language learning. It went also uh, uh, from healing to, uh, to so many other uh, advantages. Uh, also, the, uh, this particular uh, you know, uh, book, uh, Movie Making as Critical Pedagogy, is also uh, uh, very interesting. Also, these, you know, when we talk about transforming education and transforming schools, I would like you to keep in mind edutainment, Reina, as a major aspect. Uh, a very, very uh, highly recommended book of, uh, you know, uh, Jessica Davis, uh, Why Our Schools Need the Arts. Uh, Gail in California, I think she. She has, this is a very uh, interesting and powerful book because it gives so many ideas to all, everyone who would like to make use of any type of, uh, of uh, art in their classroom. Uh, it's an arts integration really framework, 
research and practice uh, very uh, strong. Now I mentioned Carolyn Graham. Carolyn Graham is pretty much a, a strong advocate of learning through uh, just chance. And uh, she wrote so many books and, and, and published them uh, and uh, uh, chanting uh, and writing songs. Uh, we know it today is pretty much what, uh, what uh, our children, what students like to do. So if the language is there, that would be a great way of, uh, of getting uh, to the learners. Um, for drama, there are a number also of, uh, of books that, that are quite uh, influential and useful. Uh, for language, really, for filmmaking, uh, I would like to also uh, mention this particular uh, book, The Director in the Classroom, How Filmmaking Inspires Learning, a, a, a must-have also book in addition to uh, the use of film in education. Um, I would like to finish with this particular quote uh, about filmmaking, um, is a chance to live many lifetimes. I just want to add the adjective memorable lifetimes. And I'll be happy to answer your questions. <laughs>